now that everything has been done with the data we have encoded we have split our data we have scaled our data so the next and the last thing that we have left with is implementing a logistic regression model do remember the logistic regression is a classification model we use it to classify different kind of models and implementing it is very easy again we have our sklearn library which will just do everything for us we don't need to write uh, the code of S uh, logistic regression we don't need to write the code of linear regression linear logistic regression is just a mixture of linear regression what we have from linear regression pass it to a sigmoid function and get it out as a logistic function so the sigmoid function is also known as the logistic function now let's implement our machine learning model let's create our model so from sklearn we are going to call it out from the linear model so from sklearn linear model we are going to import logistic regression let's check it out so everything is just fine again we don't need to write the code because sklearn is a library which has done everything for us so if you are a researcher if you are a scholar then probably you should be learning the mostly the back end of the regression and try to write out more about uh, the logistic regression algorithm try to implement it by yourself rather than using the sklearn library but uh, if you are more of a practical guys who just need to implement every whatever he gets and to get out the result and create beautiful models out of it then you can just use out the library and call out again for deeper understanding you should always prefer to write your own code but as of now let's go on by sklearn let's create a class object so let's create classifier classifier is equal to logistic regression and let's keep the random state again zero again we have different parameters over here we have penalty let's look into the different parameters. we have penalty we have dual false fit intercept which is by default kept true intercept scalings class weight if you want to assign to a particular class uh, random state which i've mentioned zero so solver lgfgs max iteration the number of iteration that we are going through is 100 multi-class auto verb was zero okay if this is a multi-class problem so it is automatically checked but if you want to uh, mark it by manual you can also check it verb is zero warm start and jobs l1 ratio so we don't need to mention any one of these as of now we are just implementing a very simple logistic regression model successfully you have created the object for logistic regression now we need to fit it out for that again classifier dot fit and over here i am going to pass x chain and let's pass our y train x train and y train oops and uh, there's a typo okay so our linear regression model is set from the training data that is x train and y train if you want to ever check uh, the value of x train and y train you can always check it out so copy x train paste it out you can check out all the values of this again this is scale data and let's pass out forward so for the first value we have zero for the next one we have one now this might look very much unreadable for you because all of these is scale data and y train is absolute values that is zeros and one so uh the next thing that we need to do it is to predict out from our uh, testing data and then evaluation of our model that is checking out how good our model is so let's start by first uh, getting out the values so for that what we can do is uh, we can create an array first of all so let's first create y pred is equal to classifier okay classifier dot predict and what it will do it is it will take all the values of x test and 
help us to thread so we have y thread and then we have y test you can compare out both the values y pred is the prediction values that our model has given us so y pred is the predicted value by our logistic regression model and y test is the real values which we have observed so this is the testing value which is used for evaluation now what uh, we can do is we can just concatenate both of them side by side and check uh, both the values as this might be quite unreadable so let's do np dot concatenate and let's pass white red first of all white red dot reshape i'm going to reshape it in the needed format which we need so uh, we need in, in a single uh what is so len we are going to pass white red okay so and one okay so we have got the needed value that we need so y pred one if you want to ever check it you can always check it out so let's check this value what it does it will just give it in a single uh, vector okay single dimensional vector you don't have it so it has been reshaped and the same thing i am going to do with uh, y test so i have this value and after that the same thing I am going to do with with y test y test dot p shape and first pass len and then pass y test and let's pass one with it okay let's pass one and I guess it went down so it's comma one okay so we got the value so both had been concatenated and the axis has been put uh, equal to one yes. axis is equal to one for better reading okay so over here we have the prediction value in the first column and in the second column we have the test values so zero zero which is equal zero zero which is again equal again you can see that our machine learning model predicted one for the one two three four five six seven eight nine 11th 11th case but it was actually zero then most are same so you can see that most of the time our machine learning model has done a great job but we cannot evaluate our model just by seeing and telling out the values if it is equal or not we need different kind of metrics which we have already discussed before now in our next video we are going to implement uh, and get out a confusion matrix of our machine learning model and a classification report on it so let's jump into our next